Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Red Circle, and Spotify. Also, the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, check out Off the Floor. That's our new Discord server. We've got eight different channels there where you can communicate with us, with other Heat fans. We provide the host updates. We've got a main thing chat. Of course, we've got to call it the main thing. It's a Heat thing. Uh, we talk not hoops on there as well. If you want to talk during a Dolphin game, we've got a fam- fantasy gambling channel, all kinds of cool stuff. It's $2.99 per month. If you subscribe to the old Off the Floor This is much improved. You can find the link right here in the description on YouTube or on the podcast feeds. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We tell you all the time about Better Edge. I just actually filled out my NFL bracket for the weekend. You can go to betteredge.com. Use the code 5RSN. It's the code 5RSN. This is legal sports betting because you're betting against others who use it. Our tournaments for NFL are just $10. NBA, they're $3. And you get $20 to play if you use the code 5RSN when you sign up. So you do the math. And now, today's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor panel. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick. And at Five Reasons Sports, you can find our guy Greg Sylvander at Greg Sylvander. The Miami Heat coming off a bad home loss. Greg and I went into it in last the last podcast against the Chicago Bulls. Second time they've lost to the Bulls. They play the Bulls again coming up on Saturday. We are not anticipating uh, seeing Tyler Hero or Bam Adebayo or even Haywood Highsmith in that game. We'll pre- be pretty much the same crew. Could see Josh Richardson back. But we are expecting some of these players to start returning next week. Tyler Hero told reporters he can be back Monday or Wednesday. Of course, they got two interesting games coming up next week. Minnesota, which is red hot right now. I, I, the, the things that Naz Reed's going to do to the Heat, I don't even want to consider because okay. um, he's done them when he hasn't been this good. And uh, they play them on Monday, the Wolves here, and then they go Wednesday to Orlando to play a very improved Magic team. So it's not going to get easier. They got to get this win against Chicago and get to 15 and 11. But when some of these players start to return, Eric Spolster is going to have some better decisions to make. And the most important decision that Eric Spolster makes when it comes to rotation is not the one that everybody talks about. Everybody gets into who he starts. And I can tell you that the Heat organization has never viewed it that way, at least not since Eric has been the head coach. It is about how many pieces they give him to finish with. We know that this team has been in a ton of clutch games the past couple of years. Last year, they were terrific in them, particularly as the season started to progress. This year, they've been bad. And we've talked about some of the reasons why. Defensively, they have not been very good, Greg, almost throughout. Um, And the offense, we weren't expecting a whole lot, but there's been some issues there as well. But the important thing, again, from the front office's perspective is, have we given Spolstra six or seven guys that he feels comfortable closing with, depending on how they're playing that night? And we believe that they have, actually. Whatever the flaws are in this roster, there are options to close. And that's going to make this interesting. So let's start here because we have some of the numbers for the fourth quarter, Greg. And these numbers are noisy. And the reason that they're noisy is because so many guys have been out. Exactly. And there have been so many weird games. So it's hard to say, okay, Spolstra would play these guys. We don't really know in the case of some of them beyond, obviously, Bam and Jimmy. And even the Jimmy numbers are always warped a little bit because – in the fourth quarter, because he typically doesn't play the first four to six minutes of the fourth quarter. That's been the mm-hmm. pattern, the substitution pattern. But I'm going to go through some of this stuff, and, and we're going to try to identify who his most likely closers may be in certain situations. Okay, so let me let me give you the fourth. These are the fourth quarter numbers. These are total fourth quarter numbers. I'm going to let you do some guessing, um, and we'll go from there. Again, with some noise in the numbers, okay? 
You already know the answer to this, but I'll let you say it because I got this to you before the pod. Who leads the Heat in minutes per fourth quarter this season, irrespective of games played? So um, I'll be honest. I didn't guess this initially. I I, I went with uh, either Lowry or Hawkes, but no, it was Tyler Hero, which that just tells you that these numbers are noisy because of all the games missed and the fact that he's still – gets um uh it's not you're not saying total minutes you're saying minutes per game no, i'm right? saying minute, minutes per game minutes yep. per game i'll give you the number here it is tyler hero again i gave it to you before we started i'm not going to get into how he performed in them because that's going to be part of the conversation as we go forward mm-hmm. tyler in his seven games he played the season averaged 11.4 minutes per game yeah. he basically played the entire fourth quarter seven games in, though in, yes just seven games Played the entire fourth quarter in those games, essentially. I mean, what minute here, minute there. He was out there for the fourth. He was a staple. Here's who's second. Bam Adebayo. In his 15 games, 10.4 minutes per game. Again, typically, unlike Jimmy, Bam starts fourth quarters or has traditionally with the Heat. Guess who is third behind Tyler and Bam? This is minutes per fourth quarter. Jaime Hawkes. Close. He's fourth. Josh Richardson is Ooh. third. 9.5 minutes. Now, would it be that if Tyler had been healthy all this time? I'm not sure. But it is interesting that he's played 9.5, and that's 20 games. So it's a decent sample size with him, that's even though he was crash. working his way into it. And it's more than Lowry. Okay? So even with as many minutes as Lowry plays. Hawkes is fourth, 9.3. Take a guess who's fifth. Oh, man, I'm not doing good at this game. Uh, uh, let's say Haywood Highsmith. Nope. Caleb Martin has averaged 8.9 minutes in his 15 games. Now, again, Caleb started to play more as Tyler went out. That's true. Taking some of those minutes, even though it's not the same position. Sixth. Who is, who is sixth? I've gotten everyone wrong so far. You're better off just letting me um... – I'm enjoying this exercise. Right. I'll give it to you here. So here's the minutes per game list. Or minutes per fourth quarter, I'm sorry. Irrespective of games played. Tyler's one. Bam is two. Josh is three. Hawkes is four. Caleb is five. Duncan is right there with Caleb, 8.8. I'm not going to count Jovic because that's too few games, and we know he's not going to be part of it. He's at 8.2, again, just three games. Orlando Robinson, 7.4. We know he's not going to be part of it. Jimmy's at seven. What did I say? He typically plays between six and eight minutes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, That rotation has not changed. His numbers are interesting. We'll get into that. Kyle Lowry is next at 6.7, and that's even with Kyle logging a ton of minutes throughout the game. Then you've got Drew Smith, Jamal Cain, Cole Swider, Kevin Love, 5.1, mm-hmm. Thomas Bryant, Haywood Highsmith, average three. Interesting. So in reality, not a closer. Okay. So – he has close. He's got you got how many different guys here with at least six minutes in the fourth quarter, which is kind of how you judge this. Again, it could be it's more important the last six and the first six. Yeah. Tyler, so, Bam, Josh, Jaime, Caleb, Duncan. That were already at six, right? Jimmy, Kyle. Eight different players have played at least six minutes. Kevin Love is right under it. And Haywood is way down the list. Okay. Yeah, not close right. either of them. Right. Okay. Now let's go through some of the numbers. We're assuming Jimmy Butler is going to be closer, correct? That's what his seven minutes in the fourth quarter are, the last seven. You know what he's shooting in those minutes? Tell me. 35%. Hmm. Averaging uh, 3.3 field goal attempts per game. He's also shooting 9% from three. Um, I guess according to this, he would have – at something like two for eighteen, I think. Uh, along, no, I'm sorry. He's one. He's one for nine. He actually is one for nine, or something Ooh. along those lines. A one for eleven. I'm sorry. One for eleven. He's one for eleven from three. Okay. So if if you've been bothered by Jimmy's late threes, which we didn't see last night, you had a reason to be bothered by them because he hasn't made them. Okay. One, one of eleven. And again, 35% overall, 86% from the line. He averages 2.5 free throw attempts. Remember, he would clean up a lot at the line late in games. It's the net numbers down this year, as are a lot of other numbers. Also, from a plus-minus perspective, per game, he's at minus 2.3 
in his minutes. But he's going to close. Bam, in his average of 10.4 minutes, is average, is shooting 43% from the field, averaging 2.7 rebounds in those 10 minutes. So that's pretty close to what his typical averages are. His plus minus is worse than Jimmy's, actually, in those minutes. Again, a lot of noise in that. But we need Damn Bam on the floor quarter. if you're the Miami Heat, correct? So he's going to be out there. Yeah. Um, so those are two closers, right? Would you do anything different when they're both healthy as far as where you would bring them in or keep them in? No, I just think we should acknowledge that as they get deeper into the season, Jimmy may come in a little sooner and end up playing a little bit more than that. You know what I mean? Like this is the regular season diet, and that could change as we get closer to the playoffs and then into the playoffs. So, um, we, But the seven minutes for now, is that's closing uh, the last seven. And irrespective of any kind of – like this is where we're at. No matter what the numbers say – Tyler, Bam, and Jimmy, they must close. That's how I feel because I just feel like we got to figure out if this if these three are really a three and um and that is gonna involve closing. And so, like as we now unpack numbers, which I know that we're gonna look at productivity, um, I don't care what it says, you gotta see what those three guys do. So there's three of your five. I agree with you. I said that last night on playback and on off the floor. The Tyler needs to close because of what he's paid, because of what his upside is, uh, and because you need to know here finally whether or not this is the three-man core that you can move forward with, obviously, until we start to talk about others, maybe a Hakez being part of that uh, core long-term, which we're getting closer to. But the numbers say something different. So – after the break here, we will get into some of the specifics, and we're going to try not to create a controversy, but I have a feeling we're going to. Football season is back, and you know what that means. Touchdown dances, Sunday tailgates, and epic fantasy showdowns. But, fellas, let's not forget the real MVP of the season, introducing the all-new Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped, your ultimate luxury beard grooming experience. This kit is your secret weapon for staying sharp on and off the field. Don't fumble this opportunity. Head to manscaped.com and elevate your grooming game with the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. You heard that right. 9 million men or 109 MetLife stadiums. We shouldn't be talking about New York. So go to manscaped.com. It's not even New York. It's New Jersey. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code 5RSN. Again, 20% off and free shipping with the code 5RSN. Your grass is not artificial. Keep it shaved with Manscaped. All right, so here we go. We, Jimmy and Bam, obviously, I mean, we didn't really need to do that exercise. We know that they're going to close, right? Okay. I agree with you that Tyler should close. Just like I believe Tyler should start, and he's going to start. And the most that he'll come off the bench, in my view, will be one game, maybe two games if they're trying to ramp him up. But I, my guess is they try to avoid that and the optics of that and just put him back in the starting lineup. And, like, you and I are in total agreement on that. Got to see what it looks like, right? That's what the regular season is for, and that's the way that they're structured. However, once we start to provide these numbers – um, they, 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 they raise some eyebrows here. All right. So Tyler hero, again, seven game sample size. We know he's been a good fourth quarter player in the past, but in those 11.4 minutes, he shot 30.8%, 22% from three and is a minus 6.4 per those games. So he's basically a minus 50 in those minutes. And that includes that game against Milwaukee where he was in, where they made a run. Remember that kind of makeshift lineup with him and Josh. And I think Jovic was on the floor actually. Um, so I just want to give you someone else here. Duncan Robinson has played 23 games in the fourth quarter. He's averaged 8.8 points. He's shooting 56.7% from the field. Ooh. He's shooting 47% from three, 82% from the line. He's actually committing fewer fouls in those minutes than Hero, Bam, or Kyle in the fourth quarter. So the foul issue doesn't appear to be there late in games. He's actually averaging uh, more than an assist in those eight minutes. So, I mean, that we, just, we talked about the playmaking. 
And he's essentially flat in those minutes. He's a minus 1.0. Again, the team's been bad, so most of the players are going to be minuses. Does that change your view on it at all? Do you Can you take Duncan out of the late game rotation if he's shooting the ball that well? Hell no. Yeah. And so this, so, so this is where I'm going to come down on this. Uh, I'm of the opinion that this is the year you got to play Tyler. You got to play Duncan. And I'm actually graduating Jaime Jaquez. And that's my, that's my closing five. And, and again, I'm landing in a place where I can't find a place for Caleb Martin. Although I think of him as a closer, what Jaime's doing is, is pretty incredible. And I think that the ascension shall continue. So like, I'm just in this weird spot where despite the defensive deficiencies, despite the, all the, all the things that we've, been hesitant to put Tyler and Duncan in lineups before. Now it's a situation where one, figure it out, and two, Duncan is improved. So I also think that he should get the credit of getting the opportunity to play those crucial minutes those crucial and minutes. and figure his way through that and not get hunted and make shots and, and be the release valve that that team needs offensively. Zach Lowe wrote in his piece about uh, Jaime Jaquez being such a breath of fresh air for – breathing life into the heat offense. Think if Duncan's not on the floor. So those two guys are kind of, they're swarming around the heat's big three for me, Ethan, as like kind of the, the closing five. I don't care what the numbers nor the positions say. All right. Offensively, I agree with you. Okay. Space that Duncan provides. And if we're going to talk about Hawkins as the fifth, which we'll get to next. We know that Duncan and Hawkins have this innate connection. It's been obvious on the court. But who's guarding the quick guards on the other team? Because we saw what a problem that was last night, right? Like, I mean, Io and Kobe White went nuts, right? I mean, you're not talking about elite guys. Kobe White's been good lately, but come on, right? They couldn't guard them. They didn't have Josh on the floor, um, but nobody else could guard them. If you're going to start or you're going to finish with Hero, Robinson, Butler, Hakez, Bam, who's guarding that guy? If, if, who's, who's guarding Drew late in games? Who's guarding um, – I mean, ba- I mean Milwaukee. That's who's guarding tough. Dame? But Jimmy? I mean, and then – okay. He, he, so that, he's going to have to take that assignment all the time because I thought that's what Caleb was for. I thought that's what Haywood was for. We know Kyle can't really do it. He does other things. But – that would seem to be the missing piece with that lineup, right? Yeah, and it almost is like the fifth is going to be an, ever, an interchangeable, ever-changing part because it's going to depend on the game, depend on the, on the matchup. Because like when you just said, who's going to guard Drew, I jumped to say Jimmy, but not if they've got Jalen and they've got Tatum. You know what I'm saying? So like, so then, Duncan, team... so then Duncan's guarding, then Dun- in that case, wh- who's Hero guarding in that lineup then? Who are Hero and Duncan guarding? Let, let, let's say you have... Let's say, and we know Hawk is going to pick up fouls late because he's a rookie, even as disciplined as he is. And I want to get to his numbers in a second. Yeah. But let's say, let's say Boston is closing with Derek White, Drew Holiday, Mm -hmm. uh, Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis or Horford, depending on matchup. Okay. So, so, so how, how you need, okay. Tatum is first priority, right? So in that, in that lineup, you, Hawkins is Gordon Tatum? Oh, man. Or Bam's Gordon Tatum? I don't know that you want to do the Bam thing on Tatum right off the bat there, and Hawkins would be a sacrificial lamb in that circumstance. That's a tough circumstance. I see where we're going here. Like This is this is a difficult thing when you put the two minus defenders on the court at the same time, and that just – it's a good problem to have. I'm glad it's not my decision to make, but like it starts to get weird. I mean, you mentioned Dame, you mentioned Drew Holiday. To your point, I think in that scenario, Tyler Hero would need to take the Drew Holiday assignment against a team like Boston. And and he's going to have to figure that out and he's going to have to And then Duncan's on Derek White. I think so. I think I mean, you're gonna have nightmares about that. I, I just, I, I, we've seen what Derek White's done to Miami. I, this is what I'm saying. I, I think we have to talk about the closing lineup in the context of the teams they have to get past, right? So yeah. let, let's say, let's say you're playing Philly, right? Who's taking the maxi assignment in that lineup? Yeah, then you're gonna need because Bam's on MVP, guy. So, 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 so Bam can't help as much, right? So this is, yeah. 
So Jimmy, I guess. No, I I think then in this. So to the point, the fifth the fifth guy slides in as a Caleb. That has to be the guy that gets that assignment. Or so now. Okay. I'm, so the next point then, if that's the case, this is who we're taking off the floor. Okay. Jaime Hawkins has played twenty four games in the fourth quarter. Twenty four of his twenty five games as a rookie, he's playing in the fourth. Okay. He's averaged nine point three minutes, three point six points. Shooting an even 50% from the floor, 33% from three, 85% from the line, averaging 1.6 rebounds, one assist, doesn't have a high turnover number, and he's a little bit below uh, on plus minus, but again, the whole team is. So he's he's much less below than others, okay? Caleb, in 15 games, averaging 8.9 minutes, 49% from the floor, 37% from three, 1.7 rebounds, 0. 0.7 assists, and he's a flat line. Like, of, and, and again, noise in the numbers, but he's actually better than the Heat norm in the fourth. So is that the choice, basically? I mean, I was saying yeah. Kyle is really only out there if they really need somebody to organize and he's got it going. I mean, is that, is that kind of where you stand with that? Yep. And that's a problem because you have such a large percent of the cap getting taken up by a player who you can't close with. Uh, it's why I feel like Duncan and Tyler just, I mean, like, what are we doing with our, with the money we're spending? If we've got three guys that are in the top six paid and they can't get on the damn court to close the game. Like, that's crazy. You got to figure out how these guys work. And it's going to be Hawkes who comes off the floor. Despite all the numbers you mentioned, rookies are the ones who end up getting um, squeezed in the playoffs, foul trouble in the playoffs, maybe a mistake on the road. We've seen that if he doesn't, it means he's done Dwayne like things because there's very few rookies that get to stay late in games in Miami Heat uniforms. I mean, there's just I mean, there's a handful of them we could probably think of. Um, so so that'll be a good again. It's good problems to have. It's just complicated problems to have. I mean, there's some variability in here. Some of it depends on opponent, how the guys are playing. And you want to give Spolster options. That's the idea. I mean, we haven't even mentioned Highsmith. He's an option in some games if they just need to lock down defensively and there's a guard who's going off. But I just have a hard time believing that Eric Spolscher is going to go from playing Jaime Hawkins 9.3 minutes per fourth quarter for essentially the entire season. It's 24 of the 25 games to not playing him in the last six minutes when he's improving. I actually think, Greg, that we're going to look back at this and we're going to say, yes, Jimmy and Bam, Jimmy's still not going to play those first four or five minutes of the fourth quarter. So there's minutes there for someone else. Bam is probably going to get 10 out of 12 of those fourth quarter minutes. Typically, if he gets a rest, it's a quick one in the fourth. I think the other four guys are just in the mix for three spots. I don't think you can guarantee Tyler as a closer. I think that they will, I think that they will start there. And give, and give him the opportunity because he's done it before he did it as a rookie, like Hawkes is doing it now. But I think you've seen enough. And by the way, we haven't mentioned the seventh guy, which is Josh, who has averaged nine minutes per fourth quarter. Now, I know both you and I are concerned about some of the late game decision making, and there's been issues there in the past. But Spo does trust yeah, him. You can't ignore that. Yeah, right, and he trusts him. He he knows what he's gonna get, even if again sometimes there's you know a play or two that you're like, what are you, what, where where are you going? Why are you stepping on the baseline? Why are you? Ma-? But we also know when Josh is engaged defensively that he would use him on another quick point guard, Max. and we also know that Josh can get to the mid range, which sometimes late in games you need that. Um, so honestly, I would throw him in as the seventh right, right. now. And, right. and 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 then and then who who's the eighth? Haywood or, or Kyle? Probably Kyle, just because yep. of Yep. Just because and then I, love is break glass in case of emergency is the tenth. And Highsmith kind of feels that way at this moment. The fact you said he's only been playing three minutes, averaging three minutes a game in the fourth quarter surprises me. Um that that remember when Caleb didn't play at all DMP C D against uh mm-hmm. Boston in game seven, the year that mm-hmm. Jimmy missed the three. That's probably Haywood Highsmith's um, role on this team. And that's crazy because when the Denver series finished last year, it felt like he was about to be taking a mini leap. And now, like, we can't find space for him. I think that this is going to be the the big thing we're talking about here. 
when guys start to get healthy. I, I don't I don't care about the starting conversation. I really don't because they don't. I, I it, it doesn't matter. It's the first six minutes where you're getting the feel for the game. Guys prepare a little bit differently when they're starting or coming off the bench. You put Tyler back in the starting lineup because he's earned the right to be a starting two guard in this league and on this team. And because he's 23 years old and he is a core part of your future and you have more committed to him than you have to Duncan. And we know at this point, and you, we know what the optics are going to be if you're bringing Tyler back, you're sending him back. It looks like a demotion, sending him back to the six-man role. We've discussed that they need to stagger. Spolster was staggering the minutes between Tyler and Jimmy at the beginning of the season. So he's certainly going to do more of it now, and he's had more time to kind of figure out how the pieces work. And now he's got Caleb playing much better, and Josh has been playing better, at least offensively. And obviously, Hawkes has continued to grow. And Duncan, now you know it's sustainable. Like, this is real with Duncan at this stage. So Spolster has a much better handle on this group for when he puts Tyler back in to figure out which combinations he will work best with. But I don't care who starts. I really don't. <laughs> What matters with this team, because they're always going to play tight games, yep. is who finishes. And there are going to be games, I think, where Tyler Hero is not on the floor in the last four minutes because Hakez has it going. Caleb is giving them that athletic push, and Duncan's making shots, and he'll roll those three. Okay, And I think there are other times they need to guard the point of attack, and Josh is going to be out there. And so I don't think you can guarantee Tyler Hero, even though we know he's been big in those moments, I don't think you can guarantee him as a closer. I think you can guarantee him as a starter. And that's why we want to do that exercise before he comes back. That is very telling. I think Heat fans are going to be surprised by that. Um, But then there's a segment of the fan base that won't be. And I think that the front office will have to acknowledge that there is too large a percent of the salary cap being taken up by players that can't close or don't close often enough by the end of this season and then adjust accordingly. And so that's where I think if we're heading the way you're suggesting, then I think that that's what it's alluding to. And I want to classify and clarify one thing. I'm not saying anybody can't close. Like I don't think Tyler can. We've seen him close. He's done it. He's done it at the highest levels, right? It's a question of this is still the BAM Jimmy build. So it's who closes best around them in particular games against particular opponents. We know the connection between Tyler and Bam. I still need to see more of the collaboration and the two plus two equals five with Tyler and Jimmy at the end of games, because it it is more, there's more of a, a clear pecking order when it's Duncan, there's an understanding of what Duncan's role is there. With Bam and Jimmy at this stage, whereas and this is a product of the fact that Tyler is a more talented overall player than Duncan. There is an anticipation of Tyler doing more and they have to figure out a balance there as they go forward. Caleb, Caleb knows what his role is. It's basically to do anything that somebody else doesn't want to do and do it more athletically. Right. Hawk is. They've cleared the lane for him, but he doesn't take shots from anybody else. It doesn't seem like right. Mm -hmm. Josh. Just be a bulldog out there. Be annoying. Okay, get into the midi and try to be a better point of attack defender than we've seen over the course of this season, right? Kyle, set up the offense. Go to the corner. Try to make actually take a shot because we know you can make a shot, right? Yeah. There's, you know, High, hey, High Smith is just defend your ass off, right? That's it. Like, and then hopefully, for their sake, when he's left wide open, which he's going to be, which is probably why he's is going to be unplayable in a lot of those situations. Maybe he can get back to the three-point shooting form that we started to see in the preseason. Tyler's the variable because there's more meat on the bone there as far as what what he can provide. But does that add to what they're doing or does it take away? And it's the closing minutes where that's most important. So uh, we'll see how it works out. But I think people are focusing on the wrong damn controversy here. So we wanted, we wanted to hit on this. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Manscaped and Better Edge. Use the code 5RSN with both. Um both myself and uh, Brady will be at Heat Bulls 4, I guess. He tried to even the season series, which is ridiculous, in the fourth and final meeting between the teams. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad. <laughs>